Hey everyone, this is Russ from Retro Game Core. So the company TomTom asked if they could send me this device here, which is called the Pal Kitty A13. And honestly, when they first asked me, I said no. I said, can you send me something a little bit higher quality? I don't think that this is a very good device for my channel, and I feel like all I'm going to do is badmouth this thing if you send it to me. And we went back and forth about it, but eventually they said, you know, we really think you're going to like this. Just try it out and let us know what you think. So I said, okay, fine, send it to me and we'll see what happens, but honestly, I'm gonna be honest in my review. But it turns out that after about a week with it, I actually ended up falling in love with it. And I know you're probably thinking the same thing that I first did is that this looks cheap, it looks like a toy, it doesn't seem like it's gonna run anything very well, it's just one of those Chinese knockoff devices. But I'm gonna spend this video telling you all the things I like about it, and maybe I'll change your mind. So let's check it out. Let's start by talking about what this thing is in the first place. You might be surprised to find that it has a moderately powerful chipset inside. It has an RK3128 1.3 GHz CPU, the same Mali 400 MP2 GPU that's found in the RG351P, it has 512 megs of DDR3 RAM, and then it has a 10 inch 1024 by 600 screen, which actually looks very nice. It has a hefty 4000 mAh battery. It also has HDMI output, and I was able to get a 720p signal to my monitor. And then it has two USB ports in the back for external controllers, so it kind of turns it into a mini console. And finally, it has a three watt speaker, which I didn't think was gonna be very good, but honestly, because of the case that it sits in, it actually has a very resonant and rich bass to it. Now the stock firmware that runs on this device is fairly limited. You can see here it runs you know, your typical 8-bit and 16-bit systems, as well as it runs Final Burn Alpha and then some MAME games, which they call CPS for some reason, and then Neo Geo and then PlayStation 1. And all of those run really, really well. But honestly, I found out that there's a previous version of this device called the A12, and there's a custom firmware already made for it. And so what I did is I actually ended up installing that custom firmware, which allows you to run the most recent version of RetroArch 1.9.0, and it runs really well. And I'll do a separate video on that, but for now, we're just gonna talk about the stock firmware and how it all plays right out of the box. So when I first picked up the device, I really wasn't impressed. You know, it just kind of had this generic plastic shell to it. You know, I really didn't like this sticker at the bottom of it. It just didn't feel very professional or clean. Now this device retails for $100, but you can find sales for it and get it for about $75 if you look around. And honestly, when I picked it up, it felt like, you know, a cheap device, something that cost about $75 altogether. But then I started looking in the back and I was like, okay, so it's got an HDMI port, two USB ports for controllers, a headphone jack, an SD card slot, and then USB-C for charging. And I thought, well, that's actually pretty impressive, you know, to have all those features in one. It's really hard to get a handheld device that has all that as well. And it comes with a 32 gig card that's full of games. But as always, I would recommend that you replace this with a more reputable card like SanDisk or Samsung. When it comes to weight, you actually kind of want an arcade stick that's a little bit heavy, so it has a little bit of heft to it. And this one is two pounds and 13 ounces, so almost three pounds, and then 1,290 grams. So that's a significant weight, but me personally, I would like it to be a little bit heavier. But I understand it's kind of like this portable arcade console, you have to find a balance between weight and portability. Now opening it up here, you can see one of the unique features of the device is that the arcade stick itself is actually in a little compartment, so that way you can close the lid. So you have to open up the compartment and then screw on the arcade stick. And at first I treated this like a little gimmick, you know, like I didn't like the fact that it had this compartment right there in the front. To me, it looked like a place that you would put batteries or something. But you know, the feel of the stick and the buttons themselves, it isn't half bad, like I was kind of impressed. And then you can see here, here's the single speaker here. I personally would have preferred to have stereo speakers, but this one speaker does work really well. Okay, so getting into the menu itself, you can see it's pretty generic and I assume they're just trying to make it very simple for people. Going into the game section, you can see it has all the different emulators here. And when you scroll through the emulators, it has them sorted by number. It's not really alphabetical, it's close, but it's kind of all over the place too. And you can see you can browse through about nine games at a time. And if you look at the bottom, it says there's 88 pages you'd have to scroll through to find your game. There's no search option or anything else like that. And you know, little things about it bother me. So for example, it says FC instead of NES, but we'll take care of all this stuff in a future guide. I'm not too worried about the software side of things. Now going back to these buttons, I'm not an expert or anything, but I do like the feel of these. They're pretty springy. They have a tiny bit of resistance to them. And the arcade stick, you know, it feels pretty good. You know, talking about a $100 device or less than a $100 device here, it does what it needs to do. And the nice thing is that you can replace it, and I'll do that in a future video as well. These buttons here on top are actually your start and select buttons, as well as your back and volume buttons. 
You know, getting into the gameplay experience itself, this setup really does well with platformers and, you know, arcade style games. Obviously, you wouldn't want to play like a role playing game on this. But in general, your Mario games and your arcade games and stuff, they feel really good on it. There's something about using an arcade stick and buttons like this that just make it feel more responsive. And it's kind of funny to play like handheld games or older games on a huge device like this. Like it's just kind of ridiculous to play Pokemon on a 10 inch screen like this, but honestly, it's a lot of fun. I don't know if it's just the novelty of playing Pokemon on such a big screen like this with an arcade stick, but it's just kind of funny to me. And honestly, I'm pretty impressed by this quad core chipset. I mean, at the end of the day, this chipset is just about as powerful as the 351P. So any of those games that you have no problems with playing on the 351P are gonna play just great on this as well. You can see here, Mario World works great. And one of my favorite things about it is that it plays PS1 games really, really well. It cuts through them like a hot knife and butter. Here I am playing Tekken 3, not a hint of slowdown. It feels really great. And this is a perfect game to play on an arcade stick, by the way. Getting into the menu here, you see that it has a truncated version of RetroArch. Basically allows you to do save states and then change your different button configurations. Arcade games, particularly fighting games, they all run well. I didn't get a chance to test every single fighting game on here, but CPS 2 games are playing great. And given the chipset, I think that we're going to be able to play even CPS 3 games here. Unfortunately, they're not loaded on the stock SD card, but I'll cover all that in my next guide. And as you can see here, you can go into the input settings and change your button configuration. For example, if you want to try to change the layout of the buttons, you can do that right here. But honestly, I'm not really sure how to save these inputs, if it saves it across the core or across the game. It's really hard to figure out because of the way they have this RetroArch set up. And you can page through the games pretty quickly by hitting left and right, but it's not an ideal setup. As you can see here, it's not really in alphabetical order. But in general, classic arcade games like Strider here or any of the Street Fighter games, they all run really well. And these are the games that are best suited for this device. So if you love these classic games, you're probably gonna really enjoy this experience. I ended up liking this device so much that I went out and I spent about $60 buying new buttons and a new arcade stick and getting us all tweaked the way I wanted it to. And I think that says something, the fact that I was willing to invest my money into making this device even better than it is, says a lot about it. And I'll cover these physical mods in a different video. For now, I'm just showing you how it is out of the box. I think this system is a pretty good setup for horizontal shooters. I don't think you'd want to play any sort of vertical shooters on this just because of the screen space, but it's something you could probably try as well. But probably one of the most impressive things to me is how well platformers play. I think just having a decent joystick and then some pretty good buttons like this really make Mario games and Sonic games and things like that just play differently. And even navigating old school games like Link's Awakening on the Game Boy Color, it all feels really nice. It does feel a little bit silly to play handheld games on such a big device like this, but I kind of like the novelty of it too. To be honest, I handed this to my kids, I didn't even give them any explanation, and they figured it out within 10 minutes and they were playing it and loving it. Which got me thinking, in what context does this device really shine? And I think it would be really nice to have like on road trips, or potentially, you know, when you go out camping or something like that, or even taking it to a party and just letting people kind of play around with it. And this was around the time that I started thinking to myself, you know, this thing is pretty cool. It performs really well, the buttons feel good, the joystick feels pretty good. Overall, this is a pretty impressive device, especially at this price point. Now, it definitely has its share of flaws. So for example, I'm not a huge fan of this screen. It's just kind of a matte plastic panel here. It reminds me of a cheap laptop screen, which means it doesn't have very good viewing angles. But honestly, if you're not playing it in bright sunlight, you may not notice it. And up top, you can see it has bumps that stand out, and that's to prevent the buttons from touching the screen. So it has very minimal settings. You can change like the backlighting and things like that, but not much beyond that. It's supposed to be able to play movies and music and stuff, but honestly, I didn't mess around with it. I just stuck with the games. One of the things you can do is you can go into the display options and you can change it to equal proportion, which basically just means it's going to show the core provided aspect ratio. So you can see here with playing Mario, it's running at a four by three aspect ratio. And this is all personal preference. You know, some people like to have that original aspect ratio. Other people like to take advantage of the entire screen. And honestly, I don't know which camp I stand in. You know, I sometimes really do like the original aspect ratio, but other times I like taking advantage of that big, nice screen. So closing it all up is actually pretty easy. All you have to do is unscrew the joystick here, and then you just put it back in its compartment. And like I mentioned, I'm not a huge fan of this compartment here. It just looks like it's where you're gonna put a nine volt battery or something, you know, it just doesn't seem very good. And here's a close up of these buttons here. They're very clicky. It's just a start and select, and then a back button and volume button. So you're really not gonna be pushing them very often. 
But the arcade buttons are pretty nice, you know, they're legit arcade buttons. They're not the best in the world, but they work. And you can see here, after closing everything up, you have these plastic nubs here, which basically protect the screen from the buttons. Charging is really simple. All you have to do is put in a USB-C cable and it'll give you a red indicator light when it's charging and it'll turn off when it's done. Okay, so since I recently did a video on the 8 Do arcade stick, let's compare them really quick. Now I think these buttons have a little bit more spring to them. They definitely bounce back much more quickly than they do on the 8 Do one. But you do have to push a little bit harder on them than you do with the 8 Do one. You can see here, it just doesn't stick out as much on these. So whether or not one is more responsive than the other is really going to be up to you. Whether or not you like to really kind of mash on the buttons like you would with the Pal Katie version, or if you just want to tap on them with the arcade stick. Now when it comes to joysticks, there's no question here. The arcade stick on 8 Do definitely feels a little bit better. But honestly, the gap between the two is not very big. Especially considering that the 8-bit dough stick costs $90 and it doesn't come with a screen or HDMI out or external controllers or thousands of games. Whereas the Pal Kitty has all of that and a control scheme that's not that bad. Okay, so still on the subject of extra features here, you can see here I just plugged in a PlayStation Classic controller here and it just worked without any extra configuration. Now it's not perfect, for example, if you hit left on the arcade stick, somehow it also hits left on player two but you can configure all the controls in the RetroArch menu. So I think it's just a matter of messing around with the configuration to get it to work. So now trying out the 8-bit Do wireless adapter here, and you can see I'm using a PlayStation 4 controller and it's working just fine. I have no idea what game I'm playing here, but uh, it worked okay. And same thing here with PS4 controller with Contra. It seems to work okay, but again, when I switched over to the arcade stick, there were some weird control issues going on. But honestly, it's probably just a matter of changing that configuration in RetroArch. So now let's test out HDMI output. And honestly, it couldn't have been simpler. All I did is plug in an HDMI cable into my monitor. It turned off the screen on the Pal Kitty A13, and then it just outputted everything to the monitor. And I checked the resolution on my monitor, and it recognized it as a 720p signal, which I thought was pretty impressive, honestly. As far as I could tell, there was no input delay. I was playing just fine. And as well, in the output, you can change the aspect ratio. So if you want to play it at 4x3 on your TV or your monitor, you can definitely do that. And this is the feature that really sold me on the device. If you can imagine, you could take this little console over to a friend's house, bring in a couple extra controllers, then all of a sudden everyone's playing everything on the TV here. I find it to be a neat concept, and it just kind of has this spontaneous feel to it. So in summary, you know, this device costs less than $100 and you get a lot of features for that price. It has a 10 inch screen with a really nice screen resolution. It flawlessly plays games all the way up to PlayStation 1. It has HDMI out and external controller support so you can play it with friends. The arcade stick and the buttons themselves, they feel pretty good. It has a nice chipset and a good battery, and it's also fairly portable. So I don't know about you folks, but I am sold on this device. I'm really happy with it. I'm definitely keeping this in my personal collection for a long time to come. But let me know what you think in the comments below and whether or not you think I'm just crazy here. Alright everyone, that's it for this video. We'll see you next time. Thanks for watching, and happy gaming.